Hi, this, this quick video will give you an idea on how to apply cyclic loading or boundary conditions in Abacus CAE and I will quickly go through it if you are interested in looking at if you are interested in looking at how this model was constructed then please follow the video on the top and in that video I have detail dis discuss in detail how I this model which I'm showing you in this video is or was constructed and that was for assigning material orientations and bonding so you can look at any of those videos since the idea of this video is just to show you how to apply cyclic loading or any loading which varies with time therefore i will concentrate more on that and i will quickly go through some of the stuff and directly go and concentrate more on the loadings and boundary conditions Okay, so you see it's an isotropic material. I define the material properties. I assign the sections. I, I define the material orientation before I assemble the parts as I did for other cases. In this case, I had two blocks. I bonded them together in the interaction and then I go to the loading because, because that's the main aim of this video. So I'm going to apply this displacement boundary condition on this surface here and I will apply it. Currently, if you see, it's a ramp option. So ramp option basically means that since we are using a total time of one second so my displacement of 10 millimeters will increase linearly up to one second so let's say for 0.1 second it will be 0.1 times 10 at 0.2 second it will be 0.2 times 10 so it will increase linearly now if i want to define an amplitude function where it's not a linear function as a ramp but it could be any, any variation of time then i can use different options some are like already available in abacus so you can look at those so you click on this create amplitude button and you can have tabular you can give a table you can equally space them you can also use periodic i have used them before this is a combination of sine and cosine functions so it gives you that cyclic behavior as, as you want so in this case i'm not going to use that since i am an old-fashioned guy i've been using this for many years and at that time abacus CAE was not there so we either get the data from experiments of the cyclic loading or we construct our own data based on the loading conditions which are provided to us. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an amplitude function in Excel using a sine function, right? So, and also I'm using an increment of say around 0.1 here. So, and then I will increase it to a very num large number of times, uh, let's say 43, 44 seconds. To capture as many cycles as i want uh, so it depends on the number of cycles you want to really capture at the end of the day so i am taking the time to around i don't know 43 44 seconds and then i will cal calculate the sine function of that and then i will take this whole table directly from here to the amplitude function in abacus and i will show you how you can do it so you just copy paste this so let me first see if this function is looking okay or not you can also get the table in the, from experiments and you can directly paste it there as well so i'm just trying to plot now and see if it looks okay and you can see here it looks fine it's a cyclic function the most important thing here is for any quasi-static test you can survive and rich independent case you can survive with one second of total time of simulation for static analysis in this case you have to capture a number of cycles so you will have to run your simulation up to the time where then that prescribed number of cycles are finished right you can play around with that and you can scale everything up but for the time being that's what we have to do also you need to pay attention that if you are using a very large time increment in this case i have used an 0.1 time increment if you remember so i can use a time increment size of maximum time increment size of 0.1 in abacus so i can capture maximum of the points on the curve right if i define let's say 1 and 0 0.1 0 0.0 the other if i say that maximum time increment should be 0 0.5 or 1.0 then i may end up missing these points and maybe my next first point second point is here my second third point is somewhere here so abacus will not know about this in the in middle in the in, in between right so that's an important point that you try to capture as many points as possible on this curve and that will be ensured by time increment I will, I will show you how how you can ensure this right now just remember total time is 43 seconds approximately and time increment here is 
So I'm going to select all of it and I will, I'm just going to copy it to Abacus as a, as a tabular form of an amplitude. So I will just go and create amplitude again. I will select the tabular option here. So I'm not changing the name, I'm using the default name of the amplitude. And here it asks me to give the values for each time. And I just copy paste it here from paste it here, in which I did already. And now I can select this amplitude which I just created. So now this 10 centimeters or millimeters and millimeters will be a function of time and it's based on this kind of function which we have defined there. So we don't need to worry about coefficients in Abacus. If we are not familiar with that, we can define our own function and copy paste as tabular form. This is the important part now, as I told you, in, in quasi-static case, you are always using one second, but in such case, in this case, we might have to go with the actual time. So I will change it to 43 seconds, so it will take longer to finish. Also, my time increments are the question now. So, so here you see my initial time increment, I have set it to 0.1, and also I have kept the maximum to 0.1, because I know my increment in this case is that, but in experiment, sometimes you get the data which is not equally intervaled, so you need to make sure that you are capturing maximum number of points on that curve and you don't miss the peaks or, or any other issues. So, so pay attention to all those things because they are important in cyclic loading, especially from the static analysis perspective. If you are doing an explicit analysis, your time increments are computed based on the densities and elastic properties. So they are always exponent minus five, minus six or something. So they are always much lower than what you want to do. So they are already in that case, you don't have to worry about time increments because it's already capturing those points. Also, when you are defining this, this amplitude function, if your time increment falls between the two points on the curve, then Abacus automatically interpolates between the two points. So it's also important, that's why it's also important that you should try to capture as many points on each curve. Okay, so let's continue now. I have changed it to this way and now I will just skip everything, mashing, etc. You can again look at the video which is on the top, shown on the top, and I will run the simulation. So I will submit the job as I did before. And I can monitor, and I'm not going to show you the whole run. I will skip some part. So you see it starts to run without any problems. And the increments are progressing as we prescribe. So our increment size is around. 0.1 so you see 0.1 0.2 so it's, it is going as we asked it to do and then now i will skip some part and i will show you the part, last one so now you see it's finished almost 43 seconds so let's go and see the results and if i go back to the results and if i directly go with the contour plots first so these are the Mises stresses and if i plot the animation part then you can see my cyclic loading is working perfectly and the total time as you see on the screen here is going from 0 to 43 seconds so it has applied the same amount of cycles to the model so this is how you can do or apply cyclic loading or boundary conditions in abacus cae so i hope this makes sense if you have any question get back to me